Hey man, this is Lawrence Archer from Grand Slam, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast, radio show. Hey, you are listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. I am Bruce. I'm Chris. Chris, Chris, I'm Chris. (laughs) And we've just made a pact in case you're listening to this uh, Wednesday. If you all want to join us, it's going to be no booze and moving our fat asses. So I'm 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 pretty. I don't know about the no booze thing. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. season three point oh when it comes up will be uh will be a whole different people. It'll be half the uh, half of us. Yeah, half of us. At any rate, <laughs> at any rate, today we're going to speak with Lawrence Archer. I don't know if you checked him out, but boy, he's got quite a pedigree. I've been playing with in Thin Lizzy and White Snake and with Gary Moore and some of my favorite players of all time. So yeah, he's in a band called Grand Slam now. I guess they've been around for a while, but they're reunited, and I'm stoked to talk to him. Let's check. Let's have a let's have so a let's chat. So let's go ahead and let's have a chat and see what he's got to say. Lawrence, hi Bruce. Hey Lawrence, how are you? Bruce and this is my partner Chris. Hey, hi, how, are you, how are you doing, yeah. Lawrence? Good man, good, very good, thank you. Where are you at? Are you in Spain? I'm in Spain, yes. Uh, I'm about an hour south of uh, Valencia, um, so I'm on the right on the coast. Nice. Yes, it's I think, beautiful here. I think things start to mellow out there a little bit, or are they still just as bad? Uh, no, we we have uh, because we have a small population where we live. Uh, it's become quite relaxed, so uh, some of the businesses can open and uh, restaurants and bars. Uh, with uh, exterior terraces can open, so it's it's sort of normal, and the shops are open. So yeah, it's good. It's getting back to normal. So it's nice to get outside and enjoy. At least you probably have great weather there too, right? It's stunning here at the moment. I'm looking at a very lovely, beautiful blue sky, and it's half past six in the evening. That's yeah. beautiful. What's the temperature there right now? Uh, today, I think it was 30, 30 34. Holy All right, so you man. know, you know why, you know why Chris did that because I have no idea what 34 means. Chris, can you, uh, <laughs> Chris, yeah, can you go ahead and that explain is. that? What, what is that? So, so 90, no, what is it? 80? It's like about 94, 95, somewhere in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's what it's I'm hot. talking. That's beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I like got, that. I got, I got out of my car today, and um, I, I have an open-top car, and when I got back in the car, man, my legs were burning on the seat already. <laughs> <laughs> And he jumped out of the car as well for like two seconds. That's really hot. Yeah. I will take that over the cold any day of the week, Lawrence. Hey, yeah, man. I, I was so right. What's the it's, where you are? I was right. It's 93.2, so I was close. Bruce, I'm getting well, better yeah, at this. No, you're doing, yeah, not doing bad. Yeah, it's cool. So here it's in the 70s. I don't know what that equals in Celsius. It's, but... Today is going to be 24 here. 24, right. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Like yeah, it's really nice. It's a beautiful yeah. app. But it's going to be 34 on Wednesday. Why are we talking about the weather, though? I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, I should be talking about the weather. I'm the British one. You, know, <laughs> you guys don't talk about the weather. We do. Well, the reason we talk about it is because I'm from Canada and I moved down into the D.C. area. So like, yeah, okay. I'm learning the imperial system, and it makes no sense to me still. After two and a half years, I still... I still like what yeah. does Fahrenheit even mean? So I'm just learning the numbers in my head and how they correlate to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, I learned in inches, and now everything's in in centimeters, man. So it's it's uh, it's confusing. Yeah. Like yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Grand Slam. Yes. So you rejoined back in 2018, and you guys are back in business again. We are. We have. Well, essentially, um, I've been having this. Uh, Thing on my mind for really about 30 years of, of uh, recording the album, um, it's getting the songs out there as they should be, very much in the way that they were perceived in the first place and written, because I, I don't believe that anything that's been out there previously really uh, represents the songs or the band the way it, it was. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so it's always been my goal to get this done. So uh, 2018 just seemed like a great time to start the project and um, sort of just happened naturally. I fell into sort of a, a period of time in my life where it just felt like the right time um, to do it. Um, 
yeah, so I now have the guys together and we've done the album and we've got the deal with Marshall Records and Better Noise and um, yeah, it's all looking good, looking great. I'm very happy with the record. I was just listening to it before before we uh, got you on the line and the, the, the thing that struck me about it was how modern yet classic it sounded. I've never really heard uh, that type of combination. You, yeah, yeah, that... yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand exactly where you're going because essentially, um, I have what what you sort of as sort of an understanding of it is is I haven't changed or done anything unnaturally about what the way I, we've approached it. So it has a sort of today approach, but we stayed true to the way we, I wrote it or we, I wrote it with Phil in the first place. So it hasn't really changed in its uh, meaning um, or its, or its uh, message, um, but it's maybe slightly more up to date in its feel, uh, you know, but it, I, to me, it still sounds classic, but it's just recorded in a much in a and in probably a more modern way. I, I guess I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like, the songs yeah. sound classic, but the Hell recording yeah. sounds much bigger than a classic recording would. If that makes yeah, any yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is always, really cool. I mean, big, yeah, I mean, I, I've always been into big. You know, the, the bigger the sound, the better. I know that might sound a bit eighties, but it's. Uh, I'm know, from the eighties. I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, as far as the content of the of the of the album and the way it's come across as a whole, um, and for what you get from the from the sound and everything, I'm very very happy. That's what I sort of aim to do. So, what's the response been to it so far for you? Oh man, it's been it's been crazy, man. It's been crazy. Uh, the we put the album and we started playing it to journalists before we released it. And in in England, I mean, the journalists are great. I love the guys. It's and we have great relationships with the guys, but they can be very truthful and very harming. And it's and, and you know, it's a good, you know, write the touch paper and see how you know what happens. Uh, so we got like three or four guys in that we respected, um, and they came and heard this about four of the tracks. Um, and some of the guys were in tears, man. It was uh, it was like a crazy. It was a cra- it was a crazy thing because um, you know some of those guys were there when Grand Slam was there. It was like the second concert they went to. You know, it was like, right? Wow. You know, and uh, I think we captured it. That's the thing. I think we. I think you know. I I think uh, between myself and the guys, we managed to capture what people were hoping to hear and, and the songs you know i didn't want to dilute the songs and what they were in any way at all so i think we managed to catch it but the when we were played live the the response was absolutely incredible um i i you know again again you know i mean not just the old songs but the new the new songs i've, I've written a song called long road which is about uh it's a very emotional song about uh, another guitar player, Swedish guitar player, a friend of mine that suddenly died of, um, you know, I'm not bringing it down too much, but he, he unfortunately he was very ill. Right. And um, he died very suddenly and very quickly. And he was a lot of people's friends, a lot of people knew him, and he was a great guy, very, you know, up and, you know, good party animal. Um, and we, I wrote that song, we tell that story when we play, and uh, we've done the the song live and people literally just stand there in tears and it, but generally the whole thing has been re- received in a way i couldn't wish for more you know that's beautiful so i've got a two-part question one uh phil was probably one of my favorite musicians even to this day and so what was it like working with him and then the second part of that question is when you're writing new material, are you thinking about like what Phil would have contributed to it, and how he would have dealt with the songs? Um, first part question. Phil was, um, you know, Phil was a hero of mine. I was a very young man when we put when I first met Phil, and we spoke about 
playing together and we spoke about uh, you know everything about my influence and, and the thing of you know I was a kid and how does he influence me as a young man right um, and it was an incredible feeling to be in his company and working with him on a one-to-one -one basis you know I was I was 20 years old so it felt incredible for me to be in that position and um, he was he was I mean I'm hoping it's because he could see the talent within me regarding the writing side of it not any other side but that he took me on board and he nurtured that side of things and he let me run away with a lot of it you know I mean a lot right. of the grandstand songs we I demoed almost myself and introduced them to Phil and then Phil came on board and then we we did it together you know right um, and the in answer to the second part of your question I do it's almost a natural part of me to write in a way that I think Phil would naturally write to and I know that sounds a bit weird but it's a bit like um yes I obviously have that thought in mind what would what is gonna fit this you know what we've captured on this record now I want to keep right and it's not unnatural for us to to carry on in that way but I just want to make sure we nurture it and make it the way it is and yes part of that is all to do with my experience in my writing and my writing with Phil you know gotcha. okay Chris I don't have anything else. I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. Yeah, no, no, it's no worries, man. No worries. At all. I have one more then, if you don't mind. <laughs> if, <are> you, <laughs> sorry, I just thought I was getting being considerate, letting Chris get some questions in. But <laughs> I'm, I'm just on, Chris. I'm, I'm, step hey, up to the plate. No, I've, I've, I've already made fun of Celsius and Fahrenheit. <laughs> I, I've asked. I've made comments about the recording of the record. You know. Um, We've got to know yeah. you a little bit and how you feel about the record, and and it's just amazing to listen to. So that's why I'm listening. Well, I'm, I hope you enjoy the record. I mean, you know, it's always the, uh, you know, as as an artist, it, you know, I've 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 held back from from doing this for a, for a little while because I wanted it to be the right time, the right place. Um, but it's always nerve wracking to know what people are going to yeah. think because something on this level. Uh, and with you know, with Phil having been involved in the situation, uh, you know, there's always going to be people that, that are either anti or, or sure. don't don't want to accept anything other than you know something with Phil's voice on it, or vice versa. You know, so it's it's great to know that when people listen to it, that they can hear what what we've done and in in the right way. I mean, you know, because that's I want people to love the music. I want people to appreciate the music because it does have Phil's influence and it has Phil's, you know, it has Phil's input and it has Phil's influence. Um, right. But it's not, I'm not doing it to jump on a wagon of the Thin Lizzy or Grand Slam thing in, in the whole. It, it, I'm just carrying on where I left off. Sure. You know, really, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say, really. Well, I can say I, I, said, I clicked on the Spotify link they sent us. And I hit play on the first song, and the next thing I know, I went through all the songs, and I loved every one of them, especially 19. 19 Thank was you, just ass-kicking rock and roll. Yeah, man. Yeah. So. We have an American drummer, and he says exactly the same thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, Bruce, so, sorry. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Rock and roll, yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> when I say what we're going to start the set with, he always says, that. <laughs> <laughs> so my course, my last question is kind of dealing with the whole situation that we're all in at the moment. Are you guys doing anything to engage with the fans or anything different because you can't get out and tour? Well, like online, online stuff. Yeah, we've had a lot of thought about stuff like that, and we sort of left it to one side for the moment. But um, I'm doing some Q and A stuff at the end of this week on the Grand Slam Facebook page. So. Um, I'm going to be doing, I think, a couple of days of Q&A, a couple of evenings of Q&A. Um, we have, obviously, we've been uh, negotiating and signing up with MGI uh, management, and we've been doing quite a lot to try and get over to you guys, really. Um, 
because that's you know it's a big audience for us and we really like to bring it to you guys and that's what we've been trying to do in this gap is trying to get that happening but i mean as far as contacting the fans you know i i i mean it's a very difficult period and a lot of people are doing stuff and um I don't know. I, di I didn't want to dilute anything or, or jump on any bang family right. or do anything. I just, I just, I'm going to do a Q and A about everything, and people can ask me everything from Phil to what guitars or what color my underpants are. That I don't know, <laughs> that's fine. All right, I'm going to ask what color are they today? <laughs> that was a British joke right there. The, the cheetah skin, but uh, cheetah yeah. skin, cheetah yeah. skin, boxers or briefs. <laughs> Oh man, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, awesome. yeah. I, I actually yeah, 80s, have one 80s, more. 80s, yeah. I actually yeah. have one more because the coronavirus thing has really brought this up to me. Yeah. You're, you said you're living in Spain now? Yes, correct. Yeah. So, how is Brexit going to affect Grand Slam? Oh, well, this is all going to come out in the wash at some point um, because there's no. Nobody knows uh, what's going to happen. I mean, there's a lot of talk about how difficult it's going to be for any English band to tour in Europe, for example. Yeah. Because uh, we're going to have to go back to the old school um, regarding carnets, um, things like merchandise, how where we're going to get it made in different territories. All those sort of things play play a card in this. So. We don't really know. I mean, at the moment, we're sort of, we. I mean, we were due to be playing a lot of uh, European festivals over this time now. I mean, we're, uh, you know, in April we were in Sweden, then we we're in Belgium, then we we're in Ireland, and then we we're back in Belgium, Germany. Uh, you know, so I mean, we were going to be pretty busy over this period of time. But um, the Brexit thing, I think, is going to be a little bit of a big hit for any band touring in Europe, particularly. Um, I don't know how about how it, I don't think it's going to affect us through the rest of the world, but I mean certainly for for doing the rest of Europe, it's going to be a very difficult situation. Yeah. And what about you? Since you live in Spain, and you have like the freedom of yeah. movement now, what happens when? Yeah, that... I mean, when I say I have freedom of movement, I mean I live in a place that has a population of less than five thousand people, and things in Spain they've opened up certain things in certain areas because of the fact there's not a lot of people and we've had no cases in this local area uh in this uh sort of province now yeah for quite some time so they've opened up things they haven't opened it up totally i mean you know um restaurants can have uh, you know like 30 percent inside and right. all terrace restaurants can operate outside bars are the same there's but still no gathering of people so the gig things uh are just still a little difficult um, but I mean more, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean more on. in terms of because you're a British citizen and you live in Spain. Yeah. How is that going to change or will it change? Well, no, I mean, I will always be a British citizen, but where I live, um, um, my, my wife will probably be, be, um, a Spanish, uh, citizen eventually. Um, I own two houses here, so I so essentially now this is changing. I have to sort of take that on board. But I think my wife will become a um, a resident here in Spain. Cool. Um, and I'll run everything from UK. I mean, we have we have our you know Grand Slam um, is a going concern in the UK. So uh, that's probably where I'm going to base myself as a business. And um, my wife will be a resident here, so um, and I'll just travel back. The only thing, that, the only thing that really restricts you these days now, especially is uh, because we're not part of the EU. I have to travel back, you know, every ninety days or whatever it is. I have to travel back to UK or out the country. Right. Yeah, that's you know, that's so. that's what I was wondering. I was like, this is because before you wouldn't have to do that, right? Before Brexit. No, 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 no. You wouldn't have to do that. You could be here for a long period of time, but. Uh, um, in, in theory, you could be here for six months. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of things have changed, but nobody knows where it's going to land. There's so many things in, uh, you know, so many uh, uh, plates in the sky at the moment uh, <laughs> yeah. spinning around, and nobody really knows where it's going to where it's going to land because uh, with the Brexit thing and the COVID thing, and so many things have been delayed. Um, you know, but 
you know, it, we, we've been trying to keep the band business going and trying to keep things sort of uh, on, you know, we've, we've booked our UK tour. We've actually booked a UK tour in December. Uh, we've signed the management deal in, this, in America. Uh, we're really hoping to get out there, but we can't, we, nobody, I don't think anybody's made a decision on whether anything's opening up. Right. Um, so we were due to go to Ireland in August because all because uh, Ireland actually made an announcement they were going to open up to as many as five thousand people um, in a crowd gathering oh, and nice. two two festivals there. But I don't know whether they're retracting that. That's at the moment. I don't know. I'm hearing stories that maybe those those will go. But at the moment we've we got a couple of couple of shows in Ireland and then we do our tour in uh, UK in December we have like uh, 12 15 days in December before the Christmas period and then um, and then I'm doing a cozy pal tribute show on the around the Christmas period nice. then I'll probably come back to back to UK yeah so well yeah I mean you know, I mean I'm, I'm totally vibed about it but it, it's it's a long waiting game you know Absolutely. Well, when you make it to the U.S., make sure you give us a call. I don't, or Hell let yeah. us know. I want to make sure I'm there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, let's meet up and do it, do it face to face. That'd be great. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time, my friend. Good luck with the record and stay safe. Best of luck with yeah. the record. Thank you guys. Ass. I hope it all goes well out there. I know you got a bit of trouble going on, but I hope. It oh my goodness! Well. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, <laughs> it is a mess at the moment, man. But I hope, I'm sure you come out the other end. Oh yeah. Okay, man. Hi, man. Thank Take you. For, be well. Right, bye. Cheers, man. Bye. 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 bye.